Hey, kids, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Gibbon, your host, and joining me is my good friend, Paige. How you doing, Paige? I'm good. How are you? We're all right. Uh, we just got back from Symposia in Fort Wayne as this big, big sort of like pastory, conferency, church worky thingy where they talk about a lot of stuff and sometimes it makes things more clear and sometimes it makes things more confusing because it's just the deep end of the pool. But we were talking about this and we had some questions. We're going to tackle uh, husbands and wives and submission and all that deeply uncomfortable stuff. Uh, what, what bad stuff could happen? Oh, there's, there's a lot, like, if you take that really legalistically, like a lot of people are like, okay, if you're the wife, then you shouldn't question your husband. You shouldn't, like, he's the authority. You need to follow everything that he says. It's like, well, that doesn't seem right. Okay, so, and, and maybe just to sort of clarify, we're talking about Ephesians chapter fives. Uh, wives submit to your husband as the church submits to Christ for just as, as um, Christ is the head of the church. So is the husband, the head of, of, uh, of, of the household of the wife. Uh, and, and so this is also about that, that the husband would present the, the wife holy and without blemish or spot as again, Christ sees us. This is about Jesus and the church all the way through. And so this is the problem with, with sort of grabbing scriptures here and, and there is you can take them out of context and make them mean almost, almost anything. And that gets dangerous real quick. Um, so like maybe even just this word submit might be worth talking about because submit isn't just like I'm the boss and my wife has to do whatever I say, no matter what, um, because that's not what Jesus does for the church. Like, think about this. He, he comes in, he, he's confronting the people who don't listen to him, who don't respect him. And what does he do for them? He dies for them. That might be a better approach. Let's start here. Um, so, so then what we have inside of all of this is, is uh, the church, the bride, um, without blemish or spot. Us, you and me, sinners, who have never done anything wrong to, to sully the name of Jesus or our own names or our own reputation. No, that's not going to work. Um, and, and then you get to deal with the fact that, you know, is this just say yes all the time? The word submit is actually better found in as the church submits to Christ. The submission is actually, it's a military word. It, it, it's a hide behind me kind of word. So when when we submit to Christ, yes, we recognize he's in charge because he's God. Um, but how does he use it? He dies on the cross. <laughs> if, if our understanding of marriage is anything different than the husband dying on the cross for the wife, you're doing it wrong and, and probably sinfully, especially if you get into them, that 1950s misogyny stuff, which is ultimately always sort of tries to devolve itself into. So um, we, we take our shelter behind Christ. We want him to be in charge because now when something wrong happens, it's his fault because that's, that's actually the Bible verse. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. So I take all of my wrong and I say, your problem, fix it. Um, um, not just boss me around and make me serve you, but rather Christ came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Yeah. And that I think is something that um, the Christ came to serve and not to be served part that kind of gets lost in translation when you just isolate this verse, because um, when you just say like the very first part the wives submit to your husband it almost sounds like the other way around that the husband is to be served not to serve so how would you go about talking about this in the context of marriage so um when we go with this again like we we, we actually start with jesus um when we talk about this we get to talk about this this thing called authority um because this this is a, a submit word to um to the pagan pagans love authority because that means you get to be in charge you get to boss people around um you get to sort of say like i'm going to do this thing and it's about what i want uh so again let's ask a question about jesus because this is as the church submits to Christ as Christ is the head of the church, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Always and always, always, you sort of have a smaller and a bigger one as the other. Um, so, so marriage is the picture of something eternal, namely Christ's love for you, the church. There will actually be a time without marriage. There was a time before marriage. After the resurrection, there will be no marriage, says Jesus. The Sadducees get real upset about the whole thing, try and catch Jesus in a gotcha moment, and, and he sort of dodges the whole thing and teaches, which is really cool. There was a time before marriage when there was just Adam, and it wasn't going so well. Um, it is not good that man shall be alone. But in all of it, if you sort of take hold of two sinners in a room, you say, this will be a perfect picture of something, you're going to do it wrong. So instead, we go to 
Jesus. He is the picture, the, the perfect, he is the, the, the thing that the picture is pointing to. So Jesus has all authority. He is in charge of everything. Is authority a gift to Jesus or a burden to Jesus? It's a gift. It's a burden. Oh, I was always thinking that it was a gift because, like, it's a gift to serve. And so I guess I was thinking more of, like, this kingdom rather right. than, okay. So so think about this. So so, so you have a job where, where you serve others, right? Um, you, have, you have authority. You're, you're in, is that easy? No. It's, it's a good thing. Like, don't get me wrong. It is a, there, there's gift in it. I, I guess you're right. But at the same time, like, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he was like, man, this is all about me and I love it. No. Um, this, this was something, though, that he willingly bore for you his bride the church for me his bride the church um when we talk about authority to the christian it's always a burden it's 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 a gift to be able to serve it's a gift to to be able to to be of service to someone else but it's absolutely not about you and so to the christian then we approach authority with with great trepidation um authority is given because anybody who's trying to grab it to use it for themselves has already left the reservation but to somebody then who has bestowed upon them the, the gift of marriage and so i want to be married because it's not good for man to be alone but it also comes with a a terrible burden now that, that the responsibility of this family it's all my fault if it goes wrong and if it goes right it's all for someone else i, I get to be last in this equation in the same way that he who was first became last for us that he who is greatest became the least this is where you start to, to understand this idea of, of um well service it, it, it's always sort of jesus putting himself underneath to hold up Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because I know um, in one of the symposium speeches, like it was just, or papers, um, they were talking about this and it clarified some things and it also made some things a little tricky because, you know, sin is in this equation. And so what happens if, say, for example, this is just a hypothetical situation, like a woman is being abused in her relationship. And it's not going good because sin breaks stuff. And she goes to her pastor and he brings up this verse as kind of a just wait and see, maybe it'll get better. When is that appropriate and when is that completely inappropriate to do? Or is it always inappropriate? That's always inappropriate. Step one is get safe. Um, this this is it. If, if you are in an abusive relationship, step one is get to a safe place, not follow directions. Um, as those those sort of put in authority to, to care for souls as, as pastors, this is the first thing, get safe. We, we can sort out the mess later because you're right, if there's sin, there's, there's broken stuff. There's a whole bunch of glass on the floor and it's going to need to get cleaned up. But you also have to be careful where you step if there's glass on the floor because you can actually end up cutting yourself worse. Step one is always, always, always get safe. And here, um, when we talk about this, we get to sort of say, all right, so if um, Christ is the, the picture of, of this, then any abusive marriage has already left what marriage is supposed to be and do. This is supposed to teach of Christ in the church, and he does not abuse the church. He, he does not hurt the church, but he, he, he sacrifices himself for her. Um, to, to sort of turn this, this gift that is an image of Christ in the church, this, this blessing that is uh, God joining two people together, that they would be um, family one flesh, not just sort of in the, the, the crass sense of the word, but, but family, um, to sort of turn it into to a burden uh, that if you don't follow these instructions, you're a sinner. Like, I, I would say, let's start with the things you already know about the situation. For sure, already a sinner, but you're a baptized one. Your identity has to be in this. Second, if you're subjecting yourself to more dangerous sin, that's not okay. And if you're using the Bible as a tool to, to promote somebody else being allowed to sin against you, that's evil. Like the full stop evil should not be. Step one is get safe. A and then from there, we can talk about, you know, counseling. We can talk about care. We can talk about if there can be a restoration, but sometimes the side of glory, sinners are sinners and it just, it, it, it can't. A and so this is not then a, a, a life of, of suffering until uh, ultimately the suffering becomes martyrdom because uh, we're not to seek martyrdom. In fact, this was one of the, the ancient problems with the, the, the churches. Like, they're like, martyrdom is an honor. Dope, let's get martyred. And, and everybody's like, no, hang on. If it comes, thanks be to God, but let's not try for it. Like, let's not aim for it. So, so maybe don't seek out the abuse of marriage to prove to Jesus how much you're good at listening to him. That's not only dumb, but sinful. Because here you're setting yourself up even above Jesus who gives good gifts. Instead, inside of this thing, we get to say, um, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he does. There, there are women who have had to get divorces because they have been abused. 
they're forgiven, first and foremost, baptized, first and foremost, loved by God, and, and so should be loved by his church, first and foremost. Anytime we, we sort of grab this passage to sort of wrestle them into being abused instead of um, hold them into a place where they are served, you have left Christ and the church imagery utterly behind. And so whatever you're dealing with, it's absolutely not a Christian view of marriage, and it shouldn't be promoted. That's a really good thing to actually say to people, because I feel like when you're talking about this passage, a lot of people just leave that as the very legalistic, wives submit to your husbands, no gray area, it's either you do it or you don't, and it's really good to remind people of what you just said, it's like, if you're in trouble, get out, like, don't stay there, don't risk your livelihood for something that's not godly, and again, um, since abuse does go both ways, what happens if the man is in the abusive relationship with the woman? It obviously still get out. And how does that affect the relationship of like when we're using that Christ to the church or does it even touch that anymore because of the situation? Let's maybe I'm going to I'm going to grab the Bible from the chair and let's look at it together. We're going to be saying, is this law or gospel? Whoop. Hi, kids. Ephesians <laughs> chapter five. All right. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, again, the law is the thing that commands us to do something. The gospel is, is God doing something for us. Yes. Let's see. Wives, I'm looking for my Bible too. Oh, submit. Oh, I'm going to pick up at Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. So in that, is there law? Well, there, there is a do this, but there is also very much a gospel. And, and it's, it's tied to it. The law as a picture of the gospel. This is how things are supposed to be because Jesus has already done it for you. Because again, the law doesn't just say, this is what you're supposed to do. It tells you how things are supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be because Jesus has done this for you. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, and this mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. If you are coming away from that without a picture of Christ and the church, you're doing it wrong. And so whenever we start to talk about abuse, this is not a, 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 a how does marriage look? This is a fifth commandment issue. The fifth commandment is you shall not murder. And it means that we should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor and his body, but help and support them in every physical need. There is, there is not a vocation that, that in, it calls you to be wounded. There, there are Christians who will take up their cross and bear it. There, there are those who are martyred for the kingdom, kingdom of God. But this is not a call to seek out or, or remain in an abusive relationship. In fact, God doesn't want abusive relationships. He gives us a fifth commandment that tells us not to, to hurt each other, a sixth commandment that actually tells us to, to love and honor each other, um, that, that uh, we should uh, fear and love God so we leave uh, chaste and decent lives in what we say and do, and husbands and wives love and honor each other, uh, that, that marriage should actually be a place that, that builds up to, again, paint a picture of, well, Christ in the church. Um, the, the problem, again, is if um, we go into this book looking to justify ourselves instead of be justified by Jesus. You're always going to end up with a very different view and you always end up confusing law and gospel in it too. Um, and so instead of this, we get to recognize there's a whole bunch of sinners that get joined together. And that means that my wife knows what kind of sinner I am better than anybody else in the whole wide world and, and vice versa. And if that's all there is, then we need to find a way to prove that one is right and one is wrong. That's an argument. That's not forgiveness of sins. That's not Jesus for the church. That's not, salvation for sinners that's something entirely else and this ephesians 5 is christ in the church yeah that clears up a lot of questions that i know i personally had about the issue so thank you for going through that that was really helpful i'm glad that was fun we should uh, do it again sometime for questions and uh hopefully uh less traumatic things again though if you're in one of these relationships get safe 
Like this is this is priority one. In your baptism, you are holy. You are worthy of love. And, and so God does not give you uh, then to be hurt 